Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're concluding our study of 3rd John today. I've taken a little more than eight minutes the last two days, and I apologize for taking that much of your time. Um, I've mentioned in the past, uh, I've been encouraged to rename these uh, sessions Some Good Minutes, uh, but I really need to at least give myself something to aim for. So I'm keeping it as five good minutes. Besides, I didn't promise that they would last five minutes. I promised that five minutes would hopefully be good. Um, and also, one other thing, if I go over a minute by one second, like if it's five minutes and ten seconds, it will say six minutes, and you go to our website. So when you see nine minutes, I didn't go nine minutes. But that sounds like preacher excuses, doesn't it? Oh, well. Before we leave 3rd John, there's so many important lessons that we need to remind ourselves of. I'm not going to be offering anything new that we haven't already talked about. I just want us to remember some things. Um, I, th I think it's important um, to, to remember the destructive nature of male egos, which is exactly the problem that this book is addressing. Diotrephes wanted to be top dog. He wanted to be the big shot. That goes against everything, everything Jesus stood for. That goes against every posture that Paul assumed. And that doesn't mean that we do not express truth with authority. Jesus did, Paul did, right? But it's the authority of the word itself, not any position that we take um, uh, by puffing ourselves up. It's just such a part of our culture, and I think it's also a part of male impulse. Um, you know, you just when, if you're a guy, you remember when you were a kid, and 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 the playground, and the way you establish a pecking order almost immediately, so you know who's alpha dog and who's beta dog and who's the omega dog and who's just in the pack, and you figure that out almost immediately. Boys do that. Um, at some point, you have to grow up. When you become a man, you put away childish things, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you're going to live a life of love, you cannot act the way you did when you were a kid. We talked about those, uh, those uh, forces that have been so destructive to the church, and we've talked about false teaching, which I believe has been much more destructive than persecution, the other one that we talk about the most. But I really do believe, it has been my experience, that male ego is equally as destructive as false teaching and is often the source of false teaching as well as the source of persecution. Because guys don't act like men, they act like boys who haven't grown up. Um, and um, I just feel very strongly about this uh, because Jesus has told us, Paul has told us, Peter has told us, James, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. The first shall be last among you, and the last shall be first. If you want to be someone who has succeeded in the kingdom, Jesus says in Mark chapter 10, then you're going to be the last of all. It's not that way among the Gentiles, but it will be that way among you. Um, we have to absolutely and unequivocally reject this entire um, alpha male uh, consciousness if we are going to be men of God in God's kingdom. And our sisters need to not reward us for bad behavior. Okay, that's enough said about that. I also want us to notice, um, you know, how necessary hospitality is. Um, and, and I don't like when people say, well, this isn't just, uh, uh, you know, um, coffee cake hospitality. Hospitality means much more. Well, it means that too. I mean, that's necessary. If you and I can't just um, enjoy each other's company, then how are we going to be hospitable the way the New Testament asks us to be? And that's connected to the third point I'm going to make in just a minute. But let me talk about hospitality. It costs something. When you're enemy of the state because you're a Christian, and you receive people into your home who are agents of the church, um, you put your home, your family, your household at risk. 
but it was necessary and it was expected by Jesus, by Paul, by Peter, by John. It was expected that hospitality would be respected and extended. One other thing, and that is, and it was subtle, but it's there. And I think it's it because it's different, it stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, so you have to notice that it's like a flare going up that you can't ignore. That word friendship that's mentioned twice, the word friends, it's mentioned twice in the last verse. Um, when he's been talking about agape love the whole time, and he, and it, and he ends with philia, with with that friendship that we feel, that, that ease, that affection that we feel as friends, not just as brothers and sisters. That's necessary as well if we're going to do what he's what he's done, what he's tell, told us to do. If we're going to extend hospitality, we're going to have to do more than just love each other. We have to like each other. And we like each other by building relationships and understanding each other, and listening to each other and valuing each other. Friendship is not agape love. Agape love dies on the cross for people who are awful to you and, and who will never accept you. Um, but we're in God's kingdom. We're brothers and sisters in the same family. And if this is going to work long term, we have to like each other too. Um, and he makes that point. What did he expect Gaius to do? I think very clearly he expected Gaius to keep on keeping on, to do what he has always done which is to be a good man and to show hospitality to other good men and women of the faith who are traveling in the work of the Lord. And I also think he expects him to share John's message with the larger congregation. Beyond that, I, I, I would hate to hazard a guess. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our study of 2nd and 3rd John. Next time we're together, we'll begin a study of the book of Jude. Thank you for joining me.